This is your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Espionage. Its title, The Saboteurs. The FBI file chosen for tonight concerns a case which goes back to World War II. By presidential order two years before Pearl Harbor, the Federal Bureau of Investigation was named the official clearinghouse for all reports of suspected sabotage and espionage. In one single day during the conflict, over 2,500 such reports were received. Each one of them had to be checked separately. Tonight's case will serve to remind you that special agents of the FBI have now had vast experience combating all the tricks and stratagems of spies, traitors, and saboteurs. In the present emergency, whether it be enemy agent from without or fifth columnists from within, you may be sure that your FBI is ready. Tonight's file opens just off the Atlantic coast late one night during the war. A small crescent moon throws a dim light on the ocean. Just enough so four men in a small rubber boat can see where they're going. Enough light, too, so those not rowing can wave farewell to the U-boat they have just left. Admiral Dernitz has carried out his assignment. He has brought four saboteurs to this country. The rest is up to them. Now the rubber boat reaches the shore. Four men jump out and sailors from the U-boat return to the submarine. On the beach, the men take shovels and dig. In a few minutes, enough of a hold has been made. The equipment the saboteurs have brought is buried. That job finished, the leader of the group gathers them together and says, Also, los, Leute. Ihr habt eure Instruktionen. Führt sie aus. Those words began the careers of four Nazi saboteurs in the United States and the biggest manhunt in the history of your FBI. Later, as dawn was breaking over the ocean, other men were busy on that same sandy stretch of beach. Coast Guardsmen, local defense authorities, police, and FBI personnel. As Special Agent Jim Taylor made his way toward a group of busy men, he met Agent Paul Austin. Hello, Paul. Oh, hi, Jim. You on this thing, too? Yeah, the office told me to check with you. What's up? Some Nazis have made a landing. Oh, when? Around midnight. What's everybody huddled over there for? We uncovered the cache where they buried their equipment. Oh. They came well prepared. So far, we've come up with uh, $40,000 in cash... Some guns, high explosives, bombs, cameras, detonators, and timing devices. Oh, that's quite a load. And if they buried this much, no telling what they carried away with them. Paul, how many came ashore? Oh, we're not sure, Jim. They were only spotted by one person. Did he get close enough to give us any description? Yeah, he went over our files at the office and picked out the picture of somebody named Otto Miller. Miller? He was in Bund activities here before the war. Two years ago, he went back to Germany. Oh. We've got full information on him. How about that picture you mentioned? The office has copies on the way by messenger. Fine. Well, the minute we get them, let's check these houses along the beach. The following afternoon at the nearby FBI field office, Agent in Charge Walker is at his desk when... You send for me, Mr. Walker? Yes, come in, Taylor. Thank you. Still nothing to report on the saboteur, sir. Didn't anyone see them leaving the beach area? No, sir, and we haven't picked up the beginning of a trail on Otto Miller. You finished checking hotels yet? Yes, sir, an hour ago. We're still working on rooming houses and furnished apartments. 
Among the things we found buried on the beach was a handkerchief. I sent for you because the lab just sent through a report on it. Oh. These names and addresses showed up when the handkerchief was put under ultraviolet. All right, sir, I'll check our files. Well, that's been done. They're all Nazi sympathizers. Put them under surveillance. No questioning? No, we only want them watched now. We're hoping they'll be contacted by the saboteurs. Mr. Walker, we don't know what any of them looks like. That's why we've got to find Otto Miller. Well, let's see. Miller's file shows that he frequented this German beer garden. That's here on the list, but... So... Pardon me, Taylor. So, let's see. Walker. You have? Fine. Yes. Right now. Thanks. Miller's been located. Where? In the rooming house at 83 Hudson Street, using the name Mitchell. Get right over there. Come in. Oh, I thought it was... Mr. Miller? I'm afraid you've made a mistake. My name is Mitchell. Mine's Taylor. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Here are my credentials. What can I do for you? You can give me some information. Anything I can do, I'll do. Fine. I'd like to learn something of your activities. Such as? Where you were before you moved here. I lived in the country for two years. You see, I've been sick. Now I'm well, and I've come back to find work. Oh? You know, for someone who's been sick, you don't take very good care of yourself. What do you mean? Going for midnight walks along the beach after that storm we had here yesterday. I don't know what you're talking about. Your picture was identified as having been at Crest Harbor last night. You're mistaken, sir. We found the equipment you buried. Now, why not just tell us the story? I repeat, you're mistaken, sir. You just sent a suit out to be cleaned Yes, that's right. Well, I took the liberty of examining it. There was sand in the cuffs. That's not possible. It's a new suit. I bought it yesterday. Oh, where? In a store on Broadway. Look, do you think I'm a Nazi? I think you came ashore last night from a U-boat. But I... Told... I just mentioned a big storm here yesterday. You didn't contradict me. There was no storm. You say you haven't been near the beach, but I find sand in your pants cuffs. You also told me you bought the suit yesterday. I did? Well, that's impossible. As a wartime measure, they don't make pants with cuffs anymore. Now, let's go back and start over, Miller, and this time I want the names of the men who landed with you. Here's the pet shop, Paul. Should we move in? Yeah. Jim, there's Collitz in back by the parakeets. Yeah. Don't move, Collitz. You're under arrest. Mannheim's not showing today, Jim. I'll stay here. Will you all go call the office? Maybe they picked up Gallatin at the beer hall. Okay, I'll check it. Wait a minute. There he is. Yeah, I see him. Get the warrant ready. All right, Mannheim, you're under arrest. There's Gallatin. At the bar? No, he just came in the back door. Come on, Paul. This means we've got all four of them. chair, Taylor. Thank you, sir. Where's Austin? He's finishing the report. I just wanted you both to know the director sent through a note commending every agent who's been working on the saboteur case. Well, thank you, sir. How are you doing with Miller? He's still talking. We're putting his entire statement in writing for his signature. There's one thing we never did find. What's that? The objective they had. Well, there was more than one. Miller gave me the list. They were headed for the TVA project, all plants of Aluminum Corporation of America... Wait a minute, I've got the list here on my desk. The cryolite plant at Philadelphia, the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad, the Pennsylvania Railroad Depot at Newark, the Hellgate Bridge, the Ohio River locks between Cincinnati and St. Louis, and the horseshoe curve of the Pennsylvania Railroad at Altoona. It's quite a schedule. If they had any spare time, they were also to place time bombs in railroad lockers and crowded department stores. Just to keep in practice? Yes. What were you taking off when this broke? The auto ring case, sir. Austin, too? That's right, sir. All right. When the report on this one's finished, you can both go back to work. And... Pardon me, Jenna. Sure. Walker. That's right. You did? Have you asked him where? I see. Yes, I'll be here. Right. Never mind the auto ring, Taylor. You're still on saboteurs. Another case break? The same one. 
But we caught all four, sir. Otto Miller just talked again. There's another U-boat on the way. And now back to the FBI file, The Saboteurs. Tonight's program inevitably brings up one question. If this nation should again become engaged in all-out war, are we now better prepared to cope with spies and saboteurs? The answer is yes. Industrial plants have not forgotten how to apply the protective measures they learned in World War II. And throughout the past five years of uneasy peace, your FBI has never for one moment let down its guard has never ceased to take every possible precaution against the enemy within our gates. In today's emergency, the men of your FBI again call on you, the people, to give your full cooperation to help make America spy-proof and sabotage-proof. If the nature of your work means that you possess any secret or vital information, keep it to yourself. If you work in a defense plant, don't talk about your job in public places. If you see or hear anything suspicious, don't try to investigate it yourself. Check page one of your phone book for the number, then call the nearest field office of your FBI. Tonight's file continues in Agent in Charge Walker's office as he and Special Agent Taylor re-interview Saboteur Otto Miller. Miller, you say the other U-boat is due to land any day? They could be here already. But... You don't know where they're hitting the coastline? No. How many are there in this group? Four men. But you can only identify three. Yes. Mr. Walker, suppose I lay out our pictures again for you. All right, Taylor. Excuse me. There you are, Miller. This one, I'm sure, is with them. Grove, they call him. We've got his name as Leopold Green, sir. And he, I know, is along. Dudley. That's Wilmar Duncan. And Bell here. He's in our files as uh, Herman Bergen, Mr. Walker. Oh, well, Miller, take a look at these group shots. See if the fourth man is there. Very well. Say, this is the man, this one. With a mustache? Yes. What name did he use? Webster. What job did he have? He was a leader like me. According to the note on back of this picture, we've got no file on the man. Is Webster his real name? I never knew. Mr. Walker? Yes. They gave Miller here the name Mitchell as an alias. They changed Green's name to Grove, Dunklin to Dudley, Bergen to Bell. The first two letters always remain the same. Mm. Now, if you stayed with that system, Webster's real name might begin with W.E. Miller, does that give you any idea? W.E.? No, I still don't know. Taylor, get out our phone books. Read names starting with W.E. You stop him, Miller, if he hits the right one. Was his name Weeks? No. Weirden? No. Weatherby? More German. Uh, Weber? No. Wild? It's no use, Mr. Let's keep Taylor. going, Miller. If it's not in this book, we'll try the next. <laughs> Webley? No. Uh, Wexler? Wexler? Wait. Is that it? Uh, no, it's not. All right, let's get back to the list. Redberg? No. Uh, Weiss? No. Wetzel? Wetzel. That's it, Mr. Taylor. That's his name. After learning the names of the new group of potential saboteurs, the entire facilities of the FBI were mobilized for the most extensive manhunt it ever conducted. It was learned that the second submarine had landed men in Jacksonville, Florida, 
Several days after receiving this information in Agent Walker's office. Taylor, we just got a teletype. Two of the new group have been apprehended. Which one, sir? Herman Bergen and Leopold Green. Oh, that's two down, two to go. You gotten any lead on Wilmer Dunklin? No, sir. What about Wetzel? Well, I just heard from Washington. They have no record on anyone named Wetzel being a Nazi sympathizer. I see. Oh, pardon me. Certainly, sir. Walker. Yes, this is the agent in charge. That's right. What name did you say? I see. Yes, I'll be here. Goodbye. You don't have to search for Wilmer Dunklin. That was he on the phone. What? He called to find out if he could come in and see me. Why? He says he's got something to talk to me about. I'll say he has. He'll be here in a half an hour. Go to Jenkins' desk and stay close to the intercom. I'll call you later. Good afternoon, Mr. Dunklin. What can I do for you? I have a matter to straighten out. All right. I returned to the city yesterday and... When I called the rooming house where I used to live, the landlady said an FBI agent had been to see me. He wanted to know why I didn't report for my draft board examination. Yes, Mr. Dunklin, we check on those things. I'm not a draft dodger. The law says you must notify the draft board of any change of address. Oh, well, I thought... Well, I thought that only meant if you move someplace in this country. Have you been away? Yes, to Mexico. Uh-huh. What made you come back? I got a letter last month from a friend who lives here. He's starting a garage. He wants me to work for him. I see. He doesn't want to give me the job, though, till he sees my card from the draft board. They said to see you before they'd give me a card. Well, what is the number of your draft board? 28. I'll notify them immediately that you contacted us. Anything else? Uh, no, that, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Walker. Dunklin's just leaving my office, Taylor. I want you and Austin to keep him under 24-hour watch. No luck yet, Mr. Walker. Has Dunklin shown any sign of getting in touch with Wetzel? Well, I'm not sure, sir. At 8.55 last night, he took a cab to the railroad station. He asked the information clerk what time the next train was due in from Florida. That's where the other saboteurs landed. Yes, sir, I know. But if he went there to meet Wetzel, he was disappointed. After the train unloaded, he left alone. Where'd he go? Back to his room. Maybe he called Wetzel from there. Well, he's got no phone in his room, sir. There's a pay station in the hall, but he didn't use that. Taylor, we've got to find Wetzel. He's the leader. He can operate alone. Well, do you want us to arrest Dunklin and question him? Does he suspect he's under surveillance? Mm, no, sir, he hasn't given any indication of it. Then let him go anywhere he pleases, as long as you two are watching him. Paul, if we have to follow Dunklin into another movie today, I'm going to... Uh-oh. Boy, I thought he was going to make a break for that bus. Yeah. Jim, you suppose there's anything behind all this movie going? No, I doubt it. It's cutting down 48th Street. Yeah. Come on, we better move up a little. He's looking at his watch an awful lot, isn't he? Sure is. You know, maybe he's got a date. There he goes into that bar. That's no Nazi hangout. You know the place? Yeah, by reputation. Shall we go in together? Sure, come on. Go ahead, Paul. All right. Dunklin's getting some change. Heading for the phone booth. There's no door on that phone booth. Yeah, I see. Look, there's a cigarette machine beside it. Let's get down there. You got a dime on you, Jim? I think so. Let's see. Hello? Is Mr. Wetzel there? Yeah, here you are. Yeah, thanks. What's that? Oh, thanks. No, no message. Well, Paul, Wetzel's in town, or do. Yeah. Duncan's oh. stopping at the bar. Yeah. Grab your cigarettes. We'll pick him up again outside.
Paul, how many calls has he made? Yesterday and today? Yeah. Oh, at least 15. Looking at his watch again. He's due. It's been about an hour and a half between calls. Well, if we could only learn where he's calling Wetzel. I'd like to get the booth next to him when he calls again. There he goes, into that restaurant. Stay on his heels, huh? When we get inside, I'll head straight for the phones, Jack. Go ahead. Stop for a drink of water. Yeah, look, all three phone booths are empty. I'll get down there ahead of you. Go ahead, I'll wait here. Let me talk to him. Now, don't turn around. You just sat down at the table behind you. Yeah. Oh, good. He's looking at the menu, so I guess he'll eat. Stay by this booth and keep an eye on him. I'll be back as quick as I can. Back so soon, Jim? Yeah, I just went to the corner to call the office. Why didn't you call from here? I didn't want to take a chance on Duncan coming back and overhearing me. Yeah. I told the SAC about his calling Wetzel at Bridge 31425. How did you get the number? Counting the clicks each time he dialed. Oh, yeah, good. Where is that bridge number? The office is checking now. Let's hope it works. I will know pretty soon. Oh, I gave the office the number in this booth there. Duncan's ordered the full dinner. He's only on the soup, so we got some time. Good. We might need it. Any new instructions on arresting him? No. I got it, Jim. Okay. Hello? Yes, it is. Oh, you have? Good. Right here in front of me. All right, thanks. That thing worked, Jim. Number turned out to be a rooming house. Wetzel's on his way to the county jail. Fine. Come on, Paul. Mr. Dunklin? Yes. But I don't know you. We know you. Here's a warrant with your name on it. You're under arrest. All of the saboteurs were tried before a military commission and convicted. One received life imprisonment, one 30 years imprisonment in a federal penitentiary, and the other six were executed. And thus, the Federal Bureau of Investigation faced and met its greatest wartime challenge. The abysmal failure of the first attempts to land saboteurs in America caused a change in German plans. From documents captured after the war, it was learned that the Nazi High Command intended to land a group from a U-boat every six weeks. Only two more were ever dispatched. They landed in Maine in November 1944. And like the men in these first two groups, were captured before they had a chance to do any damage. Their utter failure in World War II is a source of gratification, as is the fact that not one single case of enemy-directed sabotage came to light during all those war years. However, your FBI realizes that future saboteurs will not be apprehended by a reputation, but only by the same methods which worked before. Hard work, long hours, and most important, citizen cooperation.
The incidents used in tonight's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production.